The use of expensive private jets in Africa is prevalent because direct commercial flights between African countries are not enough. Chuku Erika Achum, CEO of Falcon Aerospace Limited, wants to change that by bringing affordable ride hailing to the private jet airspace. He spoke with Arise Business Correspondent Rotus Odiri in Casablanca at AFIS 2024. Here is the report. Here in Casablanca, Morocco, at the Africa Financial Industry Summit, uh, AFIS 2024, we're going to be talking here on Arise News about aviation. And me personally, speaking, speaking to a number of executives, some uh, couldn't make it here because their flights were cancelled, others had delayed flights. So the conversation around the issue with trying to travel uh, within Africa again has come up here at this setting with many business executives. And we have a very interesting conversation uh, that we're going to have with a CEO who is trying in a tech space uh, who is trying to um, essentially solve this problem. Uh, Chukwe Erika Achum, who of course is the CEO of Falcon Aerospace Limited, uh, great to have you here. So uh, tell me, this is very ambitious stuff you're trying to do here. So explain this, so you're trying to democratize private um, air flights, uh, private flights? Well, I think um, democratize, democratize access to private aviation would be, I mean, the conversation. Um, as you know, Africa is challenged uh, by infrastructure, connectivity is one of the main issues we've seen. Even right here at the AFI Summit, we've had some customers who, you know, co coming from Douala, would have to fly all the way to Paris in order to connect to Casablanca. And I mean, it is evident to see that uh, that problem exists. Mm. And uh, Falcon Aerospace, we are trying to solve that problem yeah. by means of optimizing access to to business aviation, also, um, I mean, by means of technology as well. We are launching two fantastic apps, ChatterXC and FlyPGX, and we believe that uh, with these apps, we should be able to bring, you know, business aviation closer to to the consumer. So, the, so this whole thing with the apps, you essentially want to be able to have people charter a flight on an app. So we are here in Casablanca now. If I needed to fly back to Lagos. Um, in you know, theoretically with your app, I will be able to order a plane to come pick me up. However, it has to make business sense, right? There has to be enough demand in a particular location for a plane, and then also where the plane is taking folks. So talk about that. Has, they, the demand has to make sense, right? Absolutely, demand has to make sense. The supply also has to make sense. I mean, for us, um, the collaborations go just beyond um, the consumers but also charter operators that are based throughout Africa. Um, and that, I believe, uh, is, is the unique selling point for us. Um, we're already in talks with uh, several, because we are an operator as well. We are a traditional aircraft operator as well. We understand the pain points. And um, most importantly, the pricing points, which seems to be a little bit um, out of the scope of uh, many businesses in Africa. And um, I mean, yes, uh, those collaborations are ongoing in terms of um, <coughs> in terms of pricing points. Um, Forty percent of airplanes fly airplanes flying in Africa are actually flying empty, right? If we can connect that demand more or less and uh, connect the supply as well, we should be able to optimize the price. Um, well, I mean, with the power of our applications as well, we would be able to regionalize the demand. Right, because I mean, having a 360 view, we can see the passengers who want to fly from Casablanca to maybe Dakar and match them with an operator who more or less has, um, well, not exactly those routes, but uh, routes that are very close to, to, to both the origin and the destination. But how, how did that, I mean, we know how much a typical um, flight costs on a private plane. Um, so, you, you know, if we assume it's about $5,000 to go maybe from Lagos to Accra, you're trying to bring that price down, right? So how would you do it? Is it that you're breaking it down by the number of passengers? How, is that, how would that work? So, so traditionally, um, charter has always been about the entire airplane, right? But we can still keep the experience even if we charter out just the seats. Right, so by fractionalizing, you know, that demand and supply, you, the consumer can still have the experience and power of business aviation while just at the cost of a seat, you know. So, like you mentioned, um, an hour's flight on a Hawker 900 XP from Lagos to Accra might cost you 
north of five thousand dollars, but it might cost you considerably less if you're just chartering the seat compared to the entire airplane. Now, who is your competition? Are you competing against commercial airlines, or you know, in order to bring more convenience and you know quicker flights, or are you competing against you know other? private you know uh, private aircraft in the, in the region how, how how does that work who's your competition well i'll say who is our collaborator right um, for us i think part of the takeaways here today is that we've seen you know all the good stuff being said about a more prosperous africa you know how africa needs to industrialize you know how africa has to capital capitalize um, but all of those conversations cannot happen if we cannot move around Right. Yes, there's technology. Um, I mean, amazing things are happening in the tech space. You know, we now have people who are able to converse from miles away without seeing each other. But truth be said, you still can't beat that good old, you know, face-to-face um, -face conversations. And all these chain leaders, the, the, the captains of industries, people driving this change, they need to move around Africa. And for us, I believe that's our mission. How do we go about it, right? I don't think going about it, you know, the mean, via the means of competition is, is really the way. Well, we can compete, but at the same time, I believe collaboration is the key word for us here. And um, from our, some of our applications, you will see that uh, we cannot actually make out a business without uh, our so-called competitors, right? We need to have them on the app. I mean, just like your usual uh, ride-sharing apps, you need a rider and then you need a driver as well. You know, give us. I mean, I really, as far as the pain points, we were, before we came, I started talking before we were recording. You were given an example with flying from Lagos to Congo Brazzaville. Can you can you share that with our viewers? Absolutely. Um, Lagos, Libra, Lagos to Libreville is an hour thirty minutes by flight, right? But um, you will find today that uh, to transit between Lagos and Libreville, you most likely will go to Addis or Paris or Lume, right? And not just the travel time, but the wait time. So for a one hour, 30 minutes flight, you might end up spending 24 hours uh, trying to get there. I mean, that's not good for consumption, not good for transactions. And I mean, for us, I believe if we can get people to move around Africa freely in time, then these conversations can actually start to make a lot of sense, right? I can go, I can have a meeting in Libreville today and return same day, right? And still conduct my business in Lagos. So, I mean, um, really, that is where the power of business innovation comes in. And we're, we're really here to, to, to democratize that access. All right, we're asking all our execs. This is just a wider economic issue. How do you see, what's your outlook for 2025? Whether you want to talk about the aviation sector or the Nigerian economy, we're asking this question to everybody. How do you see 2025 working out? So, I mean, uh, domesticating that to my immediate environment, Nigeria, first of all, we are seeing a little bit of stability with our energy availability. I mean, um, the issues of full scarcity or jet A1 scarcity seems to be a little bit, you know, behind us. At least in the last three months, we've seen that stability. On the macroeconomic side, um, yes, the constant, you know, devaluation, well, I don't know if to call it, use the word devaluation anymore because since the government isn't really playing in that um, field anymore, but I mean, that dollar to Naira spread will always be an issue for us. We hope to see some stability in that region. At least, you know, if we know the price is this, then we know we can, we can hedge. But in the case where, I mean, you make a model January 2025, and by November, you know, it's, as, as you know, there's no business plan that can hedge against this current uh, economic situation. On the demand side, I mean, we're actually seeing a lot of demand from out of Nigeria. Um, I don't know if this is due to the fact that, um, for example, our brothers slightly up north of Nigeria, like uh, Niger, Mali, um, Burkina Faso, we've seen a little bit of you know calm with regards to that conversation and um, all of the headwinds we faced with both governments blocking their spaces, we've seen that ease off a little bit. Um, and then on the <coughs> East African side, of course, we see that uh, the market indices there are showing, you know, continuous growth in their economy. And um, of course, that is being powered by 
Well, I mean, we know Rwanda being Rwanda and, um, you know, the good stuff coming out of that region. So we're, we're quite ex optimistic about Africa. Um, what we're crying for is um, we want to start to see the interest rates come down, right? Because, I mean, there's no way we can um, have or, you know, execute our playbooks without, without access to, you know, patient capital and capital that is at least, you know, able to, 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 to sustain our business. Uh, Mr. Chuku Erika Achum, uh, the CEO of Falcom Aerospace Limited, thank you so much for talking to Arise News here in Casablanca at the AFIS 2024. Thank you very much for having well, me. Well, Rutsu Suduri there, uh, Arise uh, correspondent reporting from Casablanca, Morocco, AFIS uh, Conference 2024. <laughs>